Josh keeps talking about how 60 plus days isn't enough. I think that's so many. <laughs> Until I realize that it's not. <laughs> Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode three of Road to the Scale Nationals, the series where Josh from Harley Designs and myself are taking trucks to the Scale Nationals. We're gonna be running them through a bunch of tiny little gates in an effort to win <laughs> things. I'm really hoping there's a concourse event. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> uh, in this week's update, there has been a lot of significant changes and um, Things that I would say are nearly done. I, I know that that's saying a lot. There's been more progress in class two than there is in class one. For class one, it's really super simple this week. I printed a dashboard. <laughs> that's about all I did. Um, yeah, I know it's been two weeks, but I've really been focusing on class two and three. Uh, and you'll see all of the results of that shortly. Uh, but for class one, not a lot of progress. The electronics that I've ordered, I decided to go brushed from Homes Hobbies. Uh, that stuff is on the way, hasn't arrived yet. So uh, not a lot of significant change in class one. I didn't even sand anything. That's how lazy, well, focused I've been on other builds. Uh, but this dash came from Cults 3D. Uh, there is a whole interior set in fact, and in class one, that's going to come in a lot more handy than it will in class two. Uh, but this was just sort of a prototype print just to see how it was going to look, if it was going to fit properly, uh, and it looks like it will. I may have to reduce the overall width ever so slightly, uh, but it's still gonna be a scale dash. Nice and hollow on the other side too, so I'm not adding a ton of weight. There's definitely some, uh, but I also checked into seeing whether or not I should try doing this in resin as opposed to FDM, and the resin print's gonna be a lot heavier, even with hollowing. So um, I think we'll just probably stick with FDM on this. It's got only like a 5% infill, just enough to make it a solid piece. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna add a dash, we're gonna have seats, there will be a floor, uh, there will be a much better interior in class one than there will be in class two. There will be still an interior in class two. I have to run one, I can't not do that. Uh, but this is the uh, start of that. So at least there's some progress. Otherwise, class one, I mean, we can pull it over here and you can look at it, but in fact, class one looks like it also went backwards. It's not backwards, it's just that I'm using the cab that I've already printed that looks amazing from class one for mocking up things in class two. It's been pretty cold here and printing in these sub-zero temperatures is never a great idea. It doesn't work very well. Uh, thankfully, there's now a vent in this room, so there is heat. And I have Josh to thank for that. It only took me 11 years. It's a lot more comfortable in here. A little noisier, and my hands get a lot drier <laughs> because there's not a lot of humidity. Uh, but it is much warmer, and I'll take it. Uh, anyway, uh, as you can see, uh, that's where the dash is gonna go, basically. And that should slot in there pretty nicely if I do say so myself. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, there's a lot to do and a lot that hasn't been done in class one. That's okay. The focus really has been on class two, three. Uh, the final thing I can show you is that I did mock up and found that other set of J Concepts tusks. Uh, this is a pretty small tire there, 3.85. A little too small for class one, in my opinion. It's probably more of a class zero tire, but not branded, so you can't use it in class zero. Sort of in between, and to me, I just think that's a bit too small. So, well, I don't know, we'll see. I've got other ones on the way. Class one, the mystery class. Will he get it done? I don't know. The majority of the cool stuff for this week's update is definitely class two slash three. As you can see, it's definitely becoming more and more of a truck. It's starting to look like something, not just an idea of something. And I'm really excited with the progress and there's a lot to go over. 
So um, let's just get into it. Yes, this is the class one cab, but it's also exactly what's gonna be in class two. And uh, I figured why not use it to mock it up while I'm waiting for it to get a bit warmer so we can move on to printing a second one. As you can see, there's some cage work that's been done. And I'm really, really proud of this cage work so far. And it's, it's all done by me, by hand. Scale Metal Supplies supplied me <laughs> with all of this metal. 3 16 outer diameter tube, milled steel. Uh, works great for brazing. Works great with the oaken shield bender that I have. Uh, and you can see I've actually included some of Scale Metal Supplies gussets here. They've got this cool bomb cut out on them and I just thought it looked really cool in there and you know as I've been adding more and more tube it's getting more and more intricate. Lots of details, lots of cool stuff happening here. Lots more to still happen. But as you can see I've actually added a couple tabs there to mount it to the body. Uh, there's a couple of down tubes here. That's for uh, something that uh, I'll show you here in a second. And these tubes are over length for now. They're going to get cut. And there's going to be some more bends and some sort of like work done there to sort of make this all kind of come together. Uh, initially, I did design up a whole tube back basically in Fusion 360 and quickly abandoned those plans and just kind of winged it. I had an idea roughly of what I wanted to accomplish in my head and I came pretty close. Uh, there are a few things that may need to be adjusted, especially for rear steer. It all kind of depends on uh, once everything gets mounted, how it's going to sit, if it's going to interfere with the rear tire steer. Um, there is a strong likelihood some of this tubing will have to come off. Uh, but I made it pretty modular so these things can be taken off without having to completely deconstruct the entire thing. Um, there's still a lot of tube that I need to add to kind of flesh out the whole look, but I think you get the basic idea. It's starting to come together and it is definitely um, good to see some progress. Uh, this, is, this is a major part of it. And uh, brazing, super fun and very rewarding to be able to do this at home. If you are interested in learning how to braze, I do have sort of a beginner's guide to brazing uh, that I will put a link to right up here. You can check that out. Uh, don't do all the things that I did in that video. That's all I need to say. And when you watch it, you'll understand completely. <laughs> all right, so that's a pretty good look at the tube work, uh, which I'm very, uh, very excited about. And thank you to Scale Metal Supplies for supplying me with all of that scale metal. Uh, the tubing is amazing, uh, bends really easily. Uh, and uh, is very easy to braise, as you can see. If I can do it, certainly you can. Okay, so let's get the body off. I'll start to go through some of the other changes, advancements, progress on the C2, C3. All right, let's take that off. Uh, very easy to take it on and off right now. Uh, and the goal will be to always make sure it is that easy to take on and off. And I'll explain how that happens in a few moments. You can see things are much cleaner now than they were in the previous episode. I spent a lot of time over the last two weeks cleaning up all of the wiring, really getting this as minimal as possible, uh, but also making it manageable and easy to change or swap things out if necessary. I didn't want to make things completely impossible to get at. So uh, this is sort of the result. Um, Nice weight balance too. It's almost 50-50 from left to right. I did check that on the scales before we did this episode. Or one of the major things that you can probably get a good look at here is this wire routing or this wire loom sort of thing that I've added to the transfer case. I printed out this little routing system or well for all of the wires to go from one side to the other. That way I can sort of disperse the weight equally so we've got the battery and the receiver on this side and then we've got the ESC and this side. Um, this way everything is kind of kept clean and out of the way of any moving parts. There's not a single thing here that's going to interfere with say the motor, the spur gear, the pinion, or any of the drive shafts. Everything's out of the way of itself and that was always the intention. This little piece was 3D printed, uh, designed by myself, and integrates into the transfer case. So the bolts 
so it bolts right into itself and the transfer case keeping everything nice and solid there are two uh, tabs here so you can add a couple of zip ties to keep everything in place and i've loomed all the wires and shortened them dramatically to just kind of clean up the wiring and to make it as minimal and as clean as possible uh, I've also made it very easy to swap out the rear axle. That is something that I've decided to do. We will go with a normal straight axle for class two. Uh, just disconnect one wire and everything is completely fine. You don't need to worry about that servo going crazy in class two and ruining or disqualifying yourself. Uh, so really easy to reconnect afterwards. Just uh, disconnect the links and uh, slap on the other axle. Pretty easy. Speaking of links, we now have proper links for this truck, courtesy of RC 4x4 Performance Stainless. Um, Matt over there bent up all these links for me custom to match the Sherpa exactly. So now we've got a perfect 12 and 1 quarter inch wheelbase, which I'm super thrilled about. They are all high clearance links too, so we've got a nice smooth undercarriage, which is exactly what you want. That's what the ladies tell me anyway. <laughs> I'll show myself out. So really happy with that. Uh, everything is perfect. There's no clearance issues. Uh, Panhard's perfect. Everything just works perfectly. I'm really, really pleased with those links. Uh, it's nice to have a good set of stainless links that are to the specification that you want. So if you need custom links, Matt is your man over at RC 4x4 Performance Stainless. Now, one of the things that I had ordered last time and now is finally here, the UC Fab. Oh, can we there? The, can you see that logo? The UC Fab rear steer uh, or servo on axle mount. Uh, this is a great little thing here, and it's just it's a pretty simple little piece of bent steel. But uh, I'll tell you, they're hard to come by. Uh, they did a limited run, I guess. Uh, they did some more. I've got two now, which I'm thrilled about. I'm going to put one away for the next time I'm building something with rear steer or I need servo on axle, let's say a mud truck, for example. Uh, really super easy to install uh, and um, works great. It's on there. It's doing its thing. Um, and uh, I'm much happier with that one over the one that shall remain nameless from a unnamed company that we will not name. <laughs> it rhymes with Schminjora. I know. I don't even know what I was thinking. It doesn't matter. I just, I needed something. But now I've got the right thing. You may have noticed this whole thing going on at the back here. Uh, this was my attempt at cheating. Uh, this is a drop bed. It gives you the full uh, one and a half or one and a quarter inch drop. Uh, you do have a bed back there where you can store some accessories. I'll probably put some junk back there. I also integrated a uh, fuel cell into that there. So you get an extra non-functional scale point there. Uh, that also serves to hide the rear steer servo and also gives it full clearance because that thing is hollow underneath. It also ties into uh, this rear mount here or this rear kind of chassis brace that I designed. Uh, and that is... That's for the body pin mount. So now this whole thing comes out and you've got your body pins hidden away underneath there. So this piece, this is still a prototype, uh, but it will get another set of holes probably on this side here, which will then get another set of tabs onto that cage, which will then mount to the body and the cage, uh, making it all one unit. And that way uh, we'll also design something up front and then we've got this nice body pin, body clip system all figured out and hidden away so it doesn't interfere with the rest of the body. Also doesn't interfere with any of the clearances of that rear axle and the steering mechanism. Uh, so yeah, we'll design something up front as well to handle uh, the front of the cab. And then we've got a nice solid body mount done. I learned all that from STL Sundays. It's a good solid mount. Uh, and I'm pretty pleased that I was able to design something functional there that's going to work. Uh, it's a nice way to keep it clean and to keep everything out of the way. You don't have to worry about fabricating a hinge. And you also don't have to worry about your body flying off. Because it's going to be on there pretty darn good. I'm not going to roll it anyway though, so who cares about that? <laughs> I could tape it on. <laughs> 
And finally, uh, um, in terms of updates for this week, uh, I've got the Holmes TGH winch installed. I am very, very, very lucky to have one of these. Uh, I ended up buying one used from a certain someone out there. Thank you very much, Brian. Much appreciated. Um, it's um, a pretty powerful winch. Do not put your finger around the cable like this if it's running. You'll lose a finger. Don't do it. Don't do what Johnny Don't does. <laughs> what I wanted to talk about is the way in which I've decided to set it up. I'm setting it up using mixing on the radio. So what that essentially means is that I've set the winch to work in conjunction with throttle. So as I throttle up the truck, the winch will pull in, which I think is a pretty cool way of doing it. And uh, it's just something that I had work very well for me in class one a few years ago. A few years ago. Yes, it's been that long. Pretty disappointing. Um, otherwise, uh, that's it. That's where the truck is sitting. And I'm pretty happy with the results so far. I'm actually feeling pretty good about the progress. There is still obviously a lot more to do, but knowing that the chassis is set up, everything's working, everything's wired the way I want it, everything doesn't get in the way, now I can focus on the cage, the bodywork, the interior, and some scale accessories, and this one's basically done. I feel pretty good about that, knowing that there's about 60 plus days left. Hopefully 60 days. I, I don't know, I haven't been paying attention. I don't even know what day the comp starts. Speaking of interiors, do you think an interior is completely necessary in class two or three? Are you one that likes to detail out a full interior or are you more of a craft foam kind of guy? Post your comments down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, you like series like this and you like comps, you like to see how comp trucks are built when they're more on the artistic side of things, hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the scale builders guild i think that's gonna do it we'll obviously be talking about these trucks tonight on the live stream takeover so i hope you'll tune in for that otherwise we'll see you on the next one thanks so much for watching see you again soon